Well, <laughs> uh, welcome to the July 10th Open CFS production user call. We have Andrew, Stu, Jan, Steve, and myself. And let's see, I would really like to dedicate part of each call to the upcoming user and developer summit. Uh, that is in the, the last week of October. And so far, people have voiced interest. I think it was on on the last call, Santi was interested. But out of curiosity, would any of you like to participate in the planning in some way? Uh, I know some of you are interested in sponsoring in various ways. I appreciate those efforts. But when it comes to like planning team, can I sign any of you up? Looking at some wow. new buttons here. My name's on there, so I'm already signed up. Yes. Boom. Solved. Uh, Andrew, you made a noise. I would help when I if I can, but I can't actually physically be there because I'm no worries. already have plans at the end of October. Cool. Okay. So I'll put you on after Santi who mentioned it. And uh Steve. Could I uh, could I yes. sort of tentatively add and maybe join one discussion and then see if there is anything I could help with. Sure, totally. Yeah. And Thank these you. are all super, you know, this call is informal and the event is an extension of the rather intimate developer summit. So uh, you that is absolutely possible. And where are you based, Steve, if I may? Uh, I'm in central uh, Pennsylvania, Gettysburg. Got it. Cool. Okay. So that all said, uh, I'm still tempted to say we should have some themes, be it performance, be it replication, be it uh, usability, be it you know some amount of brainstorming that's an in-person extension of the calls versus what is ZFS? ZFS is a next generation you know volume manager and file system and da da da. So uh, do you collectively have any pain points that, You'd love to just see the spotlight shined on and illuminated because we do have a few months to kind of run our own little tests and experiments and prototypes. Is there a, um, somebody was talking about a, a, uh, what do you call them? Little icon, desktop icon that was going to be sort of a GUI for managing ZFS snapshots or something like that. Is that still hanging around? Is it an idea that's, being developed it's uh, certainly an idea i mean what os was that on i thought it was windows ah uh, yes so yes there is a tool for macintosh i do know that uh i had some people look at one for windows because windows is kind of your left to your own devices for a demographic that is really not that spending that much time at the command line uh what I, and i know we've had this in past calls but right off the top of your head beyond snapshots what uh would you like to see? I see that's that's where I think maybe a user conference would be good is um, if whoever's working on that could could show us anything to get the brain cells moving because I'd kind of draw a blank. I, I think snapshots are sort of an obvious thing. Like mm. I, as I look at right now, I'm I'm doing like uh, an insane number of. Uh, Z REPL send uh, snapshot. So it's like backing up every 10 minutes. And then, you know, it would be nice to prune some of those manually, but I'd kind of like to keep them all. But, but it's sort of this like snapshot management that I don't really enjoy doing from the command line. Is, is it more, yes. is oh, it more of a managing the snapshots themselves or managing the content within the snapshots? Um, yeah, deltas, that kind of stuff. The, for, for, for me, it's uh, just a snapshot. Okay. When you be uh, get explaining the concepts behind ZFS, for example, the difference between deep and shallow copies, so basically send ZFS send pipe, ZFS receive versus ZFS clone, mm -hmm. the traders involved. Um, uh, Cost model that, yeah, taking the snapshot is cheap, but over time, garbage collecting them while asynchronous is quite I.O. heavy. Um, so garbage collection shouldn't be as frequent as snapshot taking. These kind of things, and um, 
just uh, for someone not familiar with ZFS or similar systems, it's fine to have a few dozen file systems on a small server even. And the, the liberty which, which comes with, oh, my, I want to quickly delete USA object uh, and M dash F is too slow. Why not roll back? Fair enough. It's an empty snapshot. That's this kind of thing. Okay. Uh, what GUI tools have we seen to date beyond, say, some NAS appliance or the web GUI? Because I think Sun had some kind of time machine like contraption back in the day. Is that accurate? I have um, no idea because I always did the command line. Okay. Even in the Sun days. Hmm. Okay. A bit perverted, but Zamba uh, can map uh, volume shadow copies to ZFS snapshots. What's the tool? I'll drop a link. Samba? Oh, Samba can? Okay. No, so, so that basically your oh, yeah. like, uh, yeah. snapshots are visible over SMB. So that's for the like shadow copies. Does that have any notion of deleting a shadow copy? I don't know. I only know oh, that it exists. I used it once uh, for testing and I said, okay, but I don't want to uh, use that. <laughs> Sys does the same kind of shadow copy thing as well. Um, I don't think you can delete shadow copies with it, or at least the configuration I set up had permissions such that you couldn't, um, because creation and deletion of snapshots was being done by a cron job. So I don't I want you deleting it. <laughs> okay. Okay. I, I particularly don't want an what attacker the, uh... deleting them. I would worry that in all, on old enough versions of ZFS, you may be ex able to accidentally create a snapshot by just going to the directory with the shadow copies and creating a new directory. Right, or you could touch it or do whatever, and that was kind of cool, and I guess that feature vanished over time. Um, I guess it would be nice to know visually if among those dozens of snapshots, which ones are in fact replicated elsewhere. So some amount of behind the scenes communication would be nice before you start deleting and say like, okay, delete both or delete only on the smaller all flash source or whatever. Okay, bye kitty. Oof. Okay. Uh, would be... Does anyone know of a replication tool which basically maintains the replication factor and tracks that? So but this, uh, as soon as uh, I don't know, replicated three copies of this snapshot, it's allowed to be garbage collected. Uh, guessing no. So, okay, we've identified a discomfort point, not necessarily pain point, but awkwardness mm -hmm. point relating snapshots. Go ahead. Can I extend that just a little bit? Please. Uh, Another another thing that was troublesome is in the command line, there's not a way like if you do a lot of uh, snapshotting, cloning, snapshotting, cloning, uh, and like over time, you you start to lose track of uh, maybe I'm misusing the file system, but you lose track of like how are things related? Like you really want to see the clone tree, so to speak. Good point. Uh, so that would be another thing like. If if there was some sort of GUI, then you know that would be a cool thing. I think I would use. But also, I wonder whether is ZFS even meant for the desktop? Like, I don't know if that would even be a good thing to have that user base. I don't see why not. Uh, I mean, I the, rea the, the reality is. is uh, Go ahead. The reality <laughs> is, if you give a shit about your data. ZFS is a good idea, at least if you yeah. have two disks. On my you workstations, you too. would have to uh, claw it for my cold dead hands. There you go. I uh, mean, my 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 desktop machine doesn't use it locally, but it connects to a share that's running it, and that's only because I can have a share with tons of space. I just happen to have the machine for it. But if I didn't, I would still use ZFS. All right, I, I agree. Like the the value in the file system is, it's unquestionable. Like I can't live without it. Um, I'm just concerned that the ZFS brand could be polluted by novice users 
who uh, you know aren't really ready for it or or maybe that they're you know, maybe the usability facade around it isn't good enough for those novice users. Oh, you mean Freenas? <laughs> Oops. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there has so, been some of that. Yes. And like, oh, this raid card is the best way to use ZFS because you want all the expensive things. Like, yeah, no. No, but uh, it's a reasonable um, concern because you, ZFS works differently and some of that is user-facing. So it's not just performance, it's even just the capability, for example, MD rate and Linux will tell you, no worry, we can do online rate expansion and maybe even uh, shrinking. I don't know if you can do that. And, but yeah, so this ability to just add one driver as a time, uh, at the time. Yes, I know we have the rate Z expansion you now with the caveat that the parity ratio isn't updated, and, but it's still not the best way to approach your storage. It's just, you can do this now. Um, so here is something you have to explain hobbyist uh, users or prosumers or whatever you want to call them. What, what so, is, who's going to tinker and build his own little storage server mm -hmm. instead of buying a well, ready to uh, use a time bomb? Right. Okay. See, yeah. To wrap that idea That's up good. a little bit more, I mean, again, back to the, you know, the event is what if we carved out a period of time and saying, hey, listen, we want to create a intro to ZFS cookbook that is the official air quote standard of hey this is all the shit you need to know before you go too deep into this call it a boot camp call it whatever it's not to to show at the summit it's to build at the summit to then put on YouTube put on any of our other channels and say hey before you start going down this path learn from our scar tissue you need to understand that this word means this in this context not how it is meant in some other context because you know the concept of a space versus a data set versus a pool you know all of those words that mean different things depending on where you're talking about it set that standard and say hey here is ZFS 101, do not proceed to ZFS 102 until <laughs> that prerequisite is met. Yes, and ZFS has been famous for very be it developer or advanced user oriented documentation. Right. Uh, but if, the wiki itself is like, well, okay, you know, here's what the allocator thing or mobop should look right, like. If we, right, and if we, if we say, okay, we're going to invest Two and a half hours of a summit session. Here is the list of things that we want to get across and document cleanly for a newbie to say, okay, now that you understand this, are you really sure you want to go to that next level, not just skip to page 700 and start from there? Amen. If this level of user documentation reaches page 700, Something is wrong. No, I, I yeah. you yes, know but... what I'm saying. It's like, oh, I need to do this. Okay. You know, you go and search Reddit or whatever. Red, I guess Reddit's the only place now. Goodness. Yep. For anything and say, uh, oh, here's how to solve so... this one problem in this one scenario that has nothing to do with your scenario because you didn't read the entire question. But you just ran the command and you just lost your data. Because that shit happens. So or, the... So... Go ahead. Um, I actually had this question, and I guess I, I asked it again just now. But sure, please. Uh, about two two months ago, it was I was like, "Does the ZFS community as it exists today actually see value in extending ZFS, extending the ZFS community downstream, so to speak?" Like, and it sounds like the people in this call see that as a favorable thing 
So I think the ZFS can be useful to anyone who cares about data, has a is willing to expend a little bit of money on keeping that data, uh, then it's still a steep learning curve, which is holding some people back. Like it's not, mm. it's not something you you don't want to find out that just suddenly your DKMS isn't there anymore and all your data is locked behind some annoying distro fuck up. With no and idea what's flag. supposed to, <laughs> right. yep, and you don't know what's happening, and uh, that's not, yeah, nice to experience. Um, good, but, all very good points, and I am proudly the, I'm probably the first user of uh, OpenZFS on Windows on real hardware, and. Yeah, that's all kind of stalled because we're all sitting here with our nose at the grindstone doing like stuff on big systems, but it's kind of got to happen. And what kind of nags me is that name the nearest alternative. What the heck portable file system is there that offers a fraction of the guarantees and is available in so many places? So it's like it's ZFS or ZFS. And if it takes 10 years for a file system to really become trusted and some are still struggling with that, well, here we are. Let's, let's well, look at the and do I this. Mean, for, in, in fairness, if you didn't come from a Sun background, you don't trust it. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, being, I, came, I came from a Sun background and yeah. was there when it came in. Mm -hmm. I have a more inherent trust than the non- Ingra it's not ingrained into people because it's not oh xfs has been around forever right it's three four i uh, want to use seven because that's going to solve all my problems it's mm -hmm. part of that is i haven't needed it up until now why would why would i need it now hmm. oh that's an easy sales pitch to make oh i i agree but it's because has if to be done they, at that point they're admitting they have a need which is not satisfied, or they, they are open to the idea that there's something better here. Please explain it to me. At that point, you can rattle down the feature list. Uh, you just have to uh, stop when the ice glaze over. I will say we FreeBSD nerds have, you know, a, a, the next level of experience with it from the you know, Solaris Alumos people, and then it's on you know, to Linux getting a lot of the sort of popular press, but relatively recent and inconsistent uh, yeah, and usage. The, like, the I, FreeBSD the, user, the problem, um, I've been using it since FreeBSD 7 or 7.1. Yeah, exactly. Go ahead, Andrew. I think, I mean, I think probably one of the the worst things was some of the stuff that came in with the, um, with that encryption stuff that frankly wasn't ready. Interesting. Yep. Uh, were Illumos people burned by encryption? Well, no, I, I, I don't mean, I don't mean we weren't. I, I don't think oh. we accepted it at first. Ah, but okay, got it. Uh, I think, a, but I think, uh, I want to say that was a lot pushed by the uh, ZOL people. Uh -huh. well, I, I'm not sure, but that was my impression. Okay. Um, goodness. So I heard a comment at VBSDCon, which is like, well, why didn't you come to the lunchtime ZFS boss? And the comment was, well, ZFS is like water. Like, like it's kind of assumed, like, so what? <laughs> in those circles, granted. But I can see how still in Linux land it is... Uh, uh, inconsist inconsistently adopted, if for lack of a better term, and in Windows land, very much fringe. Uh, same with, I guess, NetBSD and others. I've been using it on the Mac for over a decade. Thank you, Zevo and friends. Um, that all said, points taken, go ahead and think about what that can mean in practice and what successful examples of communicating new concepts you've seen 
uh, even outside of ZFS, just what, uh, how do we get that message across? And uh, Jan, you wrote ZFS show dot. What did you mean by that? Um, so the multi-master cluster support, please erase that. It was just a off-topic joke. Ah. Um, that's why I have a slash S at the end. It's just ah. a slash. But the show dot is um, uh, relevant. So if you want to visualize the, um, for example, the uh, origin graph of your, yes. of your snapshots and clones and so on, then I think uh, emitting it as a graph with dot file mm. would be a good idea. Because no, I hear then you. you could, could feed it into graph it to uh, override some of the styles or provide the unspecified styling information and get it. Uh, yep. Convert it into a pixel image on the terminal if you uh, like that, or um, as an inline PNG, or uh, depending on which fancy terminal you're using, okay. or you can just uh, Actually, touch the PNG or SVG and open it in, on your desktop. Okay, that's a that's yes. a really good idea. Like, is that the type of thing that is that worthy of a pull request? I mean, not pull request, but like a... uh, sure. uh, I would like to see it, but I wouldn't Ooh. like to implement it. <laughs> um, so if you want to say write a pull request, I would uh, give a big old uh, plus one. Who among us exactly, has the most graph visits? Give, give my thumbs up. Uh, <laughs> not, as a, There's an emoji for like that. Usual um. user. Uh, now, now, when you say implement it, you do mean uh, implement it in the ZFS user tools, right? In the ZFS, either via list or um, as its own, like, visualize or something. Yeah. I mean, that would probably be able to be done but as you uh, could using the stuff Hold on, and and got the table. Okay. Using the stuff in a... Um, Zlib, uh, ZFS lib core is probably all you'd need, which is a committed interface. Okay, so, so be a third party tool. Jan, I think you'll be useful in ways you were not expecting. So I believe this is in German. Wait. <laughs> uh, what is zfsviz.pl? It appears to be a. Drop the link in chat, and I will try to decode it. Okay, let's. I've got it on the screen, and here I'll put it in chat. Also, boom, it's in chat. I'm trying to scroll here. Oh, I'm getting zoom, not scroll. Okay. Ooh, the rest is English. Good. Okay. Um, for the installation. Oh, dot tpng da 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 da. Okay. Uh, from Ullenkamp. You are okay. Further credits. Continue da da da. Let's start right there. Um. I I will leave this to you as listeners to give that a go, but there is a tool that claims to be doing exactly that from a very long time ago. So it might be uh, due who, for a few little add-ons. Who is go this ahead. Who wrote it? Uh, you are okay. Gruden Comp. If I got that right. Ah, okay. Yeah, of course. Um, tree list. The, 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 oh, you see the yeah the Illumos Solar, Solaris uh, uh, device naming. <laughs> I don't okay. Know else, I got a warm fuzzy with that. Just saying. <laughs> Someone had I, that thought, and a very long, long it, time ago. Go ahead. <laughs> it probably does work. I recognize his name. Cool. Okay. He, nice. He's he's been active on some of the mailing lists in the past when I've been paying attention to them. I'm so I, on FreeBSD, you could probably write it as a FreeBSD Lua script with the ZFS binding. Hallelujah. Uh, with a Lua joke hidden in that statement. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. So moving on, and I would like to hear more from, say, um, Daniel with Zelta on this whole visualizing. It's like, well, what's the next step before, after Zelta? And I was talking to him about replication, uh, uh, sorry, about like partitioning. Okay. What's the step before Zelta? So anyway. Uh, Multi-master cluster support. The more I think about this, the more I simply want to see an efficient, like, kind of peered replication system I, where you have nice management and no miraculous clustering file system that could blow up in a hundred different ways. Yes, Jan, you have an opinion? So what I've, 
I just wrote it into chat as a bad joke. So okay, bad. okay. Uh, but and block pointer rewriting. Aside, I know, what I know. would be useful is to have a kind of streaming send mode, an asynchronous uh, stream, basically a stream of all changes as they happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that and uh, so that you, you can basically send something. And then you think of it as a ZFS uh, send uh, dash R, where the um, end snapshot is open ended. So that you can continue streaming the changes as they happen. Um, and then basically, when you take a snapshot on the source, the data is already there. Hopefully, on this. Fair the enough. Kind of Go ahead. And Let's say the issue with the with the idea of a some kind of multi master cluster support done easy is that that's a complex task. Yeah, <laughs> there there is the, no easy. That's the data shredder. Uh, don't do that. Uh, no, I'm that's forget the multi master part. That's just the bad pun part because people presume that that's easy because some other uh, key value store has a multi-master mode. Your mm. LDAP server can do it. Your um, your config store can do it. Why can't uh, POSIX compliant file system do it? Uh, well, right. Uh, right, right, right. You just explained it uh, without understanding that you explained it. So, so that frustration from users demanding things they are not, they don't understand are hard. Was well, and even motivation for the joke, not, but even for uh, just a backup uh, for point in time recovery or something, the ability to just have your server run normally and then if you have a bad for just have a continuous ongoing replication stream to a other server yep. where you receive the data as it modifies without having to always take a snapshot and then you're basically limited by your snapshot rate so that you to minimize how stale you are. Right, but so that that's you, how we do it. And it's a question of good housekeeping as opposed to a, maybe a fancy new technology. But OK, no, point to take well, even doing it. It's not how we do it. OK, what we do, you do a snapshot, you right hand it over. Is, yes. What we can do right now is we can take a snapshot, replicate it, uh, and then potentially do it concurrently. You take a snapshot every so often, whenever you've replicated it off. So you could have two tasks, one creating frequent snapshots and another one um, replicating all the unreplicated snapshots and uh, maybe even the third one to do the garbage collection. Okay. What we don't do is send off the changes asynchronously just a best effort as they happen so that when the snapshot comes around to reference them, the data is uh, almost completely there. Mm. So that the staleness window is reduced and potentially the cost better. I look forward to your proof of concept. Uh, hmm. But a, continu a continuous data protection to a system that's not getting changes is vastly simpler than trying to do a master master type setup correct and it yes. would really Amen. be useful for maybe as a building block for some outside control plane uh to then do a failover sure i mean it would be great for that you would put them to do a maintenance failover you would put the uh, um so current the source master, whatever you call it, in uh, in a kind of pause writes mode, pause I/O mode, wait for the replication to finish, fail over, and then you could re-export the I don't know, I scan the volume, maybe even the NFS service with PNFS, and continue merrily on your way, and the user just saw a short uh, latency spike. Absolutely. And 
that does not mean that you get automatic magical failover. It still means someone has to push a button uh, unless you 110% trust your automation. But just the ability to perform plant maintenance um, without uh, human time scale um, interruptions hmm. to the service would be valuable, I think. And if you can do it kind of on a per data set level where you can, okay, now pause this jail, replicate it over, sort of freeze it, and then move it over, and restart it here, depending on the service, that's good enough to do an almost live migration because they're doing it on a jail level. So basically, it's as if someone said service Postgres restart. If your client is smart enough to reconnect, it just reconnects. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's not probably not a trivial change, but it's just what I hope would be a feasible extension. Not uh, it's basically the building block for something else. Either the um, continuous repli uh, best effort replication instead of a snapshot of backup. And then you, if you combine that with some kind of monitoring which alerts on staleness, hmm. then you are kind of going back into the backup territory, but backups with, let's say, a higher fidelity because you can do a closer point in time recovery. Okay, so what current technology, be it Postgres or otherwise, most closely represents what you envision? Something like the Postgres right ahead lock uh, shipping. Got it. Okay. The, the physical journal uh, replication. Logging, you said? Uh, right ahead log is the okay. journal file. Cool. Other topics. Um, we do not have Greg to mention more SM, SNMP goodies. Uh, now, if I can type. And uh, someone had replication progress. That, that may have been him also. Uh, this was from above. We can talk the event some more. And for what it's worth, I did a quick mock up of the BSD install on FreeBSD to ask, hey, do you want to enable all feature flags or do you want to choose from this list in the share directory with the groups? And then someone pointed out, I believe Rodney, uh, Debian appears to have finer grained lists of feature flag groups than does the project, such that someone may have said, here's like FreeBSD 14.1 as opposed to like 2.1 dash FreeBSD. Does anyone know about that? at all does that be have finer brain uh, feature flag groups i can look at i'll try to look into that okay uh other topics ideas complaints questions funny jokes you name it um yes on the previous discussion where we we're talking about gooey stuff yes um I mean, I know you were talking about kind of OS graphical native stuff, but I am still working towards slowly getting a um, JSON access to everything I need for doing a web interface. Yes, sir. Uh, so having some kind of stable interface like that I kind of view as a first step to having some sort of graphical interface. And for me, it's if I write something, it's probably going to be a basic web interface because that's what's convenient for me. I thought that was, thought that was on the list a couple years ago, wasn't it? Okay, one at a time. Yes, sir. Go ahead. I thought that was on the the dev list from a couple of years ago, and you said it was inactive or was in action 
I asked Alan Jude just the other day, and I got for Zpool status via proc on Linux. Clara is working on that. And then for the CLI IX systems, as he recalls. So that was uh, the, the, about a week ago. That's only one voice, but at least it's vaguely fresh information on that. But yeah, JSON really? was stunningly helpful. Yeah, because I, I asked for that a couple dev summits ago. God, now I needed it. <laughs> this is the first that I've been, I, I was not aware that this was in progress. That um, there's hope. <laughs> is that specifically a Linux only thing? Or is that going to be exposed through, say, one of the commands? I thought it was going to be exposed through all the DFS output utilities. That was my understanding. So if you if you got an output, whether it was zpool status or zpool list, you could do dash j and it would jsonify it. I would love that because parsing the zpool list is awful. Brutal. Yes. Yes. Does the Python ZFS um, library help that any? Because I think Freenas is using that help heavily. Freenas. Uh, yes, because uh, once you have the data in uh, Python. Um, dictionaries and uh, lists, you can turn those into JSON? Yes and no. Um, I mean, Wait, ultimately, you... let me finish. Ultimately, my goal is to use it in Python anyway. Oh. And the way they're dealing with that is going through and parsing it. And a lot of the way they're doing that is grabbing it, it's it's just it's grabbing things and then you have to go and then i have to go through and and try to sort through the stuff to get exactly what i want it ends up being a bit of a mess the, what i would like to see is a libxo support in the zfs and zpool commands amen but that's a free BSD thing but yes that would be awesome and uh, Linux is portable. Okay. Uh, does anything so, else support it, despite the portability? I don't know about that, but uh, it doesn't just build on FreeBSD, as far as I know. Okay, cool. Um, and the other thing would be also, um, which I brought up now two weeks ago, is the on my wish list would be a kind of ZFS CL. Um, server mode where ZFS is in an SMTP like simple line based protocol where you spawn one ZFS slash ZPool command. I would prefer it to be one process and then you just send it the equivalent of the CLI um, over a pipe and it would respond back with the answer because I found that for a lot of my scripts a significant amount of time is lost just runtime linking and starting uh, the ZFS and ZPool commands frequently. So if you could kind of have a fast CGI mode for uh, the ZFS command. Hmm, fast CGI have it's more than one request for a, a command invocation. It just reads the basically the equivalent of ZX arcs uh, ZFS. Um, yeah, if you do that with a with a, with a JSON mode, yeah, you've turned it into a real API now. Yeah, and it, it occurred to me looking last week at SNMP, it's like this coverage is often the word. It's like, so we kind of have our random weird little subsets of all that, but what if we had a really nice solid uh, canonical reference for SNMP information, like little bits on demand, and then JSON output for when you really need to parse fancy data set. Uh, what's the word with the P? Uh, properties. So yeah, um, what other forms of coverage, for lack of a better word, are there? What are we kind of missing that we just love to have to be so delighted to open up the manual say, oh, we can now aim this at it and it's half the work is already done for us and we just make our GUI on top of it. Uh, in a lot of yeah. cases, sorry. Andrew, uh, you, can go. Uh, you too. 
work it out. Go ahead, Jan. So in my opinion, in the ZFS parsing isn't that bad in the shell because it's just if you use the dash uppercase H, it's just a tab separated Correct. per line. And it's very easy to you pass in shell by just using shell built-ins like uh, set the import field separator to tap new line and then set dash f uh, dash dash your line yep which you can easily do with a read dash i and but yeah it works in shell but it's harder to do in any non-shell language the and quite a bit is left for the reader the programming languages the more annoying it becomes yep I mean, even if dash uh, the dash capital H were supported on ZPool, that would be a huge step in the right direction. Amen. I yeah, because that is uh, the lack of that gives me fits. Um, wait, ZPool list has dash uppercase H according to the ZPool language. list does. Not all of the commands under ZPool do. Like status, which is pretty status, which is a huge one. Really yeah, okay. <laughs> status is a is a minefield. Yes. And well, this is why I would uh, why I argued for something like libxo. Yep. Yeah. All That's true. Status. status is honestly one of the things I care about the most. I mean, I care about a lot of things, but I care about that one a lot. It's a little important. Yes. Yep. Uh, oh. oh. Um, Unrecoverable check some error in pool name slash some hex number. <laughs> but lowercase j, just as happy with that as an idea. Amen. Uh, or uppercase j, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Uh, so we do a survey Jason. of the commands to find out if uh, either one is free for all commands to take or if it's already one on, or both are already in. Use oh, that's the least of my concerns is what we call it. Even if I have to like jump you know, over backwards to get the output, I'll I'll do it. It would be nice if there was a reasonable letter of the alphabet oh. available on all the CLI so that it would be consistent on all commands. Yep. Agreed. If it okay. is if it is a ZFS or Z pool um sub command that produces any output whatsoever. <laughs> Even if that's just a return value, I want a dash H or a dash J. Heck yeah, agreed. It, and I want what was that, errors to be structured. Ooh, yes, yes. that's, that's, like that's why I'm saying return value. Should be structured. That's why I'm saying even a return value. Yep. yep. But dash H does not turn return statuses into messages. I agree. I, I get this, but I'm implying it. Okay. Uh, Maybe say so it explicitly, but... No, that it was 100% for preach it, brother. Okay. <laughs> preach truth. Uh, Greg, welcome. You got some coverage, actually. Uh, I don't know if that was your output after the SNMP on the last call about the time it took to do this goodness. And uh, we talked about the upcoming user and developer events. And if you want to participate in those some way, now's the time to sign up. Although there's no time not to sign up. Is this you? Uh, <clears throat> sorry, uh, where, where, where is it? I, I haven't read up on it yet. So are, you sorry. On, are you on the video aspect of the call? I've got on screen, I hope I'm sharing. Am I sharing? No, I should be sharing. Uh, uh, there is sharing. a bunch of output on a massive 518 terabyte send, perhaps? Yeah, yeah, no, no, that was, um, so uh, before I went on vacation, so we're talking like a month ago, yeah. um, all of us were typing this command into our uh, ZFS. Oh, um, right, to find the, yeah. yes, yeah. Yeah, and this has been running for like a month and a bit now, <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah. Is it still uh, yeah, yeah, to oh, this day. Well, let me uh, check on it now. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, now I know I know exactly what you're talking about. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so uh okay. Yeah, I don't know how long that's going to take to finish, but it uh, looks like <laughs> quite a while. Uh, okay. Screen minus RD. Yeah, so it's uh, now saying 266 terabits uh, complete. 
at 94 megs a second, time remain in 1,316 hours. Hmm. Okay. So, just a you know. stupid question. Mm -hmm. How loaded is your pool? Um, it, it's. Always. You, you mean like uh, capacity wise or, or I -O wise? Uh, so, it just so happens that those, uh, that the buckets available for allocation to the, the per VDEV operation type is already filled up and you would just have to bump the uh, SUSCTLs or SUSFS settings on the next so that you can put more IOPS of the specific types per uh, cycle of allocation on your pool. Yeah, because so that I, can vastly speed up resell operations, for example. Yeah, understood. Um, so right now, it's not doing much of anything. Uh, um, as you may also recall, I, I set this up to do a test show on uh, to prove to the company that, that we could use it to do shows. Mm -hmm. And that show has wrapped. So it's the disks are basically sitting there doing nothing, just scrubbing themselves once in a while. Um, hmm. So right now, I just did a... Uh, let me see what it's saying here. Yeah, there's 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 no bandwidth at all right now. It's all zeroed out. Um, um, can you run something like ZTOP to find out if there's really no I/O at all or just very little? As in, yeah. it's uh, a lot of random I/O on the critical path, but no QDEV, so it's just one or two outstanding reads. Yeah, like uh, here's the output of that command, so you can see that it's just pretty much zeroed out. Um, but I will type. Uh, what did you want? Uh, I/O top, you said. D top, if you have it installed. If not, what you've shown is already good enough. Yeah, yeah. You have yeah. there uh, periods with no I/O, which yeah. uh, does okay. not fit my idea. We look forward to that completing. <laughs> and I've been looking at various, uh, I thought there was one canonical lib Python, but I see a bunch of people doing various equal status bits. And I'm curious, has anyone present worked with any of those? Uh, like here is the status tool. I, Which one? I, I messed with one of them. Because don't get me wrong, this has an output example of like, ta-da, stuff. But it, we obviously aren't there yet because we're having this conversation. Um, and then does it break down the V devs? And then how do you make sense of them and act upon them? And of course, that's all fun land. I guess rephrase, I'm curious if any of the Python libraries are mature enough to have a big old kludgy proof of concept with JSON output where you just sort of, well, Add it with some JSON uh, library and have a nice day. Go ahead. Does the uh, PyZFS uh, module really run the command and pass the output, or does it do internally use libzfs? And because it's blessed as part of OpenZFS, it gets to use libzfs. That is a very good question. Because I believe... that was my impression. That, uh, I believe... not that it... Andrew? Passes that stuff out of the commands. Okay. I believe the, um, uh, what is it? LibZFS Pi or, or Pi, Pi LibZFS. I think what they're using is they're using um, LibZFS Core, if I remember right. I, I spent some time looking through it, but it was weeks ago and I've slept since then. Okay. At which point I realize I'm looking at a TrueNAS repo, so that's uh, good. Um, we'll look at that again. Now, I don't oh, think I saw I, the Zpool status one. Yeah, that I think had the output, but then that's a really simple example with uh, two devices, not super helpful. Um, Hmm. Two nouns. Here we go. Boom. So the libzfs.siphon.so uh, 
um, according to LED, it pulls in libzfs, but I think so does libzfs core. So it may just pull it in transitively. Probably, or po possibly, it could be either way. Like I said, it's been a while since I, it was a while ago that I looked at it. Um, now, anything that gives you an output of the zpool status is going to just be running the, com the command and parsing the output. I think I don't think I don't think anybody's trying to use the um, the, the zpool stuff directly. Okay, come fish works. How did Sun do it back in the day? Because this is not a new problem. Like they had. Well, so I know there is things. a there is another. Well, it looks to me like there is another libzfs Python module in in Illumos that came from Sun, ah. from what I can tell. Okay, good to know. Um. I can't remember which tree it was in. I don't remember if it was in the core tree or the uh, extras tree, but it kind of confused me at first because it wasn't the one that was uh, pylib ZFS, which I thought it was looking, which, which I thought I was looking at. So uh, that confused me. Uh, the, the channel programs have some notion of JSON output. I'll drop a link here, interesting. Display channel program output in JSON format. Okay. Uh, interesting. In the chat. Mark. Okay. Um, ba, 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 dash J. Okay. Because um, again, we're not the first people to think of this notion of functions. Since you brought up um, ZFS channel programs, is yeah. anyone here from, familiar with a reason why channel programs can't create clones or new data setting? They can't? They can't. Hmm. I haven't found uh, an option, uh, an API call available to them. Uh, in the man page, which allows me to uh, get a clue. Yeah, Just grab through the man page and uh, you can promote clones, but you can't create them, it looks like. Maybe it's intentional because data set creation is special uh, and uh, you can create snapshots. I mean, this sounds to me much like Nobody thought, you know, they, they didn't think about it. Whoever was writing it, Maybe, so it just got missed. Hmm. But I'm asking because I'm running into this issue as part of my ideas on how I would like to use FreeBSD jails, where it would be very useful if I could atomically enumerate the origin of my clones, compare it to the uh, the snapshot to um, what I expect to find. And if there's a problem um, to destroy and clone a new as part of one transaction, not just what it say a bunch of uh, steps so that it would be faster, but it would then become atomic so that the whole jail with multiple data sets would atomically rebase from one snapshot to another. Yeah, what I'm, destroy. what I'm sorry, what I'm getting at is that I I can't think of any sensible reason why you shouldn't be able to. It just seems like purely an oversight. Maybe. So, hmm. but I don't know. Okay, well, it'll remain a question for now. Um, other kind of wish list items because the context is up, the upcoming event. And well, if we put our heads together for sort of a hackathon like exercise, what else might need some love in similar ways? Um, I'll do a search on the 
Delphix article on channel programs. Clone. Promote clones. Yep. Okay. Snapshotting uh, data sets and promoting clones and destroying data sets is there. Mm -hmm. Changing and listing properties is there. Mm, interesting. Creating clones is missing. Creating data sets is missing. Maybe it's analysis oriented it, rather than creation oriented, but that's just me putting words together. It's probably oriented to ex uh, all the ZFS invocations the original implementers had to uh, optimize mm. in their scripts, which is basically, this is basically what you need in a backup script. They scratch their own itches, fine. Um, yep, that's what usually happens. Uh, someone gave the ZFS RESTy REST interface as an answer to JSON output, but I don't think it quite does that. I'll leave it to the US readers to investigate. Uh, Greg, as the latecomer to the call, do you have any questions, news, or follow-ups to the SNMP goodies from the last week? Um, I, I I don't have any questions, and I still owe you more on that. I oh, cool. thought, thank you. Yeah, I, I thought that would that that command there pretty much gives you everything that you could possibly want. I think uh, some of you guys probably want more, but uh, um, all those charts are generated from that output, and and I made it so there's a um, it queries everything that the uh, that the command will uh, will output. Okay, let's take a look. Uh... Gang, if you have any questions, you, the author is with us. Let's see. Uh, it, it's dropped it simple. Yeah. Cool. Do, 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 do. So this takes the output it's, of that art. Yeah. Art, yeah. Yeah. Totally. I'm sure there's there a more go. elegant <laughs> way to do it, but <laughs> but um, but that that nice. uh, yeah. So if if you look at the instructions, uh, again, I don't know how familiar you are with the simple network management protocol, but um, in the uh, SMTVD file, you can do what's called an extension. Yep. And it will take the output of that script, and uh, and that will return all those values to whatever. So you can yeah, but you can SMT walk it. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. And, um, yeah, now you can graph all that stuff. Whatever. But I did everything. Like I said, you probably don't want everything. Yeah. And uh, Daniel had a great observation that some metadata is extremely quick to query and some of it's very slow. So if there are any that just happen to be really pokey, you might want to consider how often you query them, but for the most part, that's a fantastic start. Thank you so, so much for that. And yeah. Um, yeah, I, I hit it every five minutes, so. Okay, well, cool. Yeah. And again, that would be a good use case for kind of keeping a in-memory cache, which get, just works by scanning all data sets on startup and then getting notified of all changes so that you get an almost up-to-date Okay. version which is exactly what you want for this kind of SMMP stuff yep. unless you use SMMP to modify things but for telemetry purposes this would be the perfect interface which may even be possible with uh, dev CTL on FreeBSD I don't know if you get a dev CTL event and property changes okay interesting Let's check that Well, we're at one hour. Any other topics, questions, ideas, requests? Okay, well, it is 20, what is it, 2100 UTC. Yes, I hear someone unmuting. Go ahead, what you got? Well, I say we call it. I will be around a few minutes. Thank you so much for all that good input. And yes, it's like things like the obvious of, hey, we really need some parsable status output. And let's see what prior art there is and go from there. Okay, gang, talk to you next week.